you know, I was trying to explain to the players today something really that they don't understand. They really don't. They don't. They never see it this way because they don't have to. They don't have to think of it that way. Basketball is another is another class that they're taking at UConn. And the explanation that I gave them was, if you if you all you want to do when you're in Connecticut is get C's, then just go to class, do a minimum of studying, take your notes, and you leave here with a C, and you're good to go. Same thing in basketball. Come to practice, put your time in, leave, and everybody will think, wow, oh, that kid was a pretty good player. Well, if you want to get an A and an A-plus in basketball, you got to spend a lot of extra time on, on the game. You know, If you want to get straight A's in college, you have to spend a lot of time studying your subjects. And a lot of times they don't think of it as, this is my this is my craft. I have to study it. I have to put the time in. I have to work at it. I have to do extra. It's no different than the kid in the band who has to do extra stuff. It's not any different than the kid who's a drama major has to do extra stuff, except just go to class. And the ones that are willing to put that in, that time and that effort, end up becoming something special. And you know. Ray is something special. Is there is the percentage of kids who are willing to do that less now than ever? Yeah, is yeah. There, there, there isn't this sense of somebody just gave me a scholarship and I have a tremendous obligation to them to repay that. That's a debt that I owe. Now it's like they're doing us a favor, a lot of kids, by gracing us with their presence here. And we should be, you know, thrilled that they're here and what can we do to make you feel better and raise your self-esteem a little bit because after all that's why we were put on this earth to help you with your self-esteem. So, so you so got time for one or two more guys. When did that shift? When did it shift? Yeah. When did it shift? You know when, when everybody starts getting stuff. <clears throat> you know 30 years ago when I got the job here you got a, uh, when you showed up, you got a t-shirt that said Connecticut Athletics made out of cotton. And you got a pair of shorts made out of cotton that had stamped on it, UConn Athletics. And you know that whoever was here 10 years before you wore that same stuff. <laughs> and they roll it up in the town, they give it back in, and God forbid if you brought that back without a t-shirt in it, you weren't getting another one tomorrow. Everything you got, you got one pair of sneakers. You don't like it? Tough. Go buy your own. You know? So everything was earned. Everything was treasured because you, you just had no other stuff. That was it. And now you get so much stuff, so much stuff, both, you know, and what people give you and what, what you expect and, and whether it's you know, in class or whether it's at practice or off the court or, you know, what kind of apartments you expect to live in, you know, and what kind of dorms you expect to be in. And I have recruits asking me, your, your freshman got to stay in dorms? Uh, yeah, that's where freshmen stay to go to college. Oh, you mean you don't have a, a special dorm with a spa and a golf course in the back just for athletes? No, actually, we don't. Ah. And your practice facility? You don't have a hair salon in there? You don't travel with somebody that does that? Uh, no, we don't. Man, what's wrong with you? You guys are way behind the times. I mean, that's, and as more people start to do these things for these kids, more is expected. And then all of a sudden, you know. But there's always those few that if you can find out who they are, they have one goal in mind, you know. I want to go someplace where I, I can be something special. And, you know, luckily for us, we, we have a habit of finding those players.